I sure I would yes. I'll take that. Yeah. He uh, he is responsible for this story. We had a collaboration. Partly um, responsible. Partly responsible. Well, and uh, Colleen Thurston raised her hand. She's our producer. She had a big hand in this as well. And Colleen, actually, you should probably come down here. So. Um, <laughs> Um, I'll, this is, I'll try not to be terribly long-winded in this explanation. Um, oftentimes when the, we in the editorial department get uh, handed the assignment of putting these stories together, um, we sometimes get the material sort of fully fleshed out and fully shot. And then sometimes, thankfully, Jennifer, Jeremy, Colleen, and the producers will allow the editors to kind of interpret and take free reign to kind of add and enhance the story as it goes along. Um, when I started editing Martha's story, to me, the one of the big components of her story is how much uh, she was tied to the history and the significance of these certain beads. We weren't able to really elaborate too much because obviously we're restricted to a certain amount of time, right, time length, um, much like this explanation. but. Um, she's very, very much a uh, historical um, devotee to the actual specific beads that were representative of the culture and time that she's trying to continue. Um, and so the more she talked about these beads and her connection to them and their sort of pre-removal significance, um, to me one of the things that kept jumping out was how important the tactileness of these beads were. And so. Um, what I wanted to show and, and add to the piece was how important these sort of mm, sort of tiny little, almost atom-sized beads are to the story itself, and then put a sort of macro lens onto them. So um, I think we kind of rested on a, a sort of representation of showing different sort of washes and cascading, cascading, cascading. Um, elements of them, but uh, the way we accomplished that was we basically looked online and talked to Martha, Martha about the beads she purchases, and we ordered a bunch, and then we did a bunch of macro photography of them sort of pouring into and out of different sort of um, containers, so, yeah. And by containers, he means the studio floor, which yeah. made that all <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. There were like six people working just outside of that shot. Yes, another question over here? Yes, hi. I'm Steve Takanoa. And I had hi, a Steve. Hi. I had a question as far as it goes with um, the editing process. So we see this um, package that is roughly eight minutes long, but how long does it take to actually put it together? What is the revision process like? That's a great question. It varies. It varies. Yeah, it's dependent on the editor who is um, is tackling the certain project and what they have to work with and what else we need to shoot. It can take, you know, an editor can take a story and have all the elements they need and get it done in a rough cut to us in a week, I would say. It's yeah. like the fastest, you know? And then we start revising it from there and that takes another two weeks at a minimum, probably, going back and forth, like let's change this, let's change that, let's do this, let's do that. Um, and so I would say a minimum of three weeks in the editing post-production process. But it's, I mean, it's not like we're sitting down focusing just on that story. We're all doing other things and working on other elements of the show at the same time. Would you? I would wholeheartedly agree with that. One of the great things about the producing team and the production and editing team of OCO is that it's a very collaborative medium and a very collaborative team and Jeremy and Jennifer and the production team will oftentimes and even and Colleen and the stories that she produced will go out with an idea of what they want to capture and that's not necessarily the end stop of that story it's almost the beginning because once it's in the hands of the editors they have a lot of trust and collaborative spirit to help them sort of find the story that best yeah. represents it so 
um, at the at the very least three to four weeks. Yeah. Um, but it's always in service of getting the best story of the material that we get handed to us. And Jeremy likes to say that he has curated his production crew and his team that work for Fire Thief and. So, and I would agree with that because we trust everyone that we work with to do a great job. So. And how many cuts did we have of this? Oh gosh. Well, that depends. <laughs> Several. We made a cut today, know. actually. Yeah. Last minute. Yeah. Yeah, we're never, we're never satisfied. Question up here. Uh, I was wondering um, when Martha was talking about her beadwork and the different types of. Um, beadwork there was, like pre removal, um, you guys managed to get shots of actual beadwork, and I was wondering where you got those. Did you go to museums? Did you um, go outside um, Oklahoma? Or I'm very curious about that. So Colleen Thurston is one of our producers, and um, she is heavily in charge of finding archival photos for any stories that we're working on. And Martha provided us with several photos that she had used in her research, but then Colleen took those, and you can take it from there, Colleen. Yeah, um, like Jennifer said, Martha gave us a lot of photos. When, she, when she's talking about she went to the Smithsonian, she went to the Peabody um, for her own research, she had these photos. Um, so I tracked down where they came from, and then got permission from those various museums um, to, to use them and to show them. Um, and then I think once, once Martha lives in Dallas, so this was like only like a two day shoot or something, once they had come back, um, Charles went out and shot some of the live action um, close ups and, and the beautiful bandolier bags. Those are, that's Martha's actual work that is on display in um, various places. So we were we were lucky enough that that was accessible um, and Charles was able to shoot that. And since he was also the editor, knew kind of what he wanted and what kind of shots to get. Um, but so that was, a, that was a combination of us shooting and then us sourcing uh, those archival photos. And there was, um, there was a pair of moccasins that you were seeing live video of that were pre-removal. So we had actually been to the National Museum of the American Indian um, on a previous shoot, and that's the Smithsonian, Washington, D.C., and we went and we were able to go in their archive. This was in the first season, and so we already had video of those things, um, and so we were able to say, we were like, oh, she's talking about those moccasins, and we have video of them, so we, were, we plugged that in there, so, yeah. Okay, any other questions? All right. So our next story is um, on, thank you guys. Our next story is on Crosland Smith, who is a spiritual leader for the Cherokee Nation. Um, hope you enjoy. 